Praise God. Praise God for Jesus. Amen. 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 God is actually waiting on us because he's been ready. Amen. Amen. You know that the Bible says, for I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob, Jacob are not consumed. He doesn't change. He's always about his own business. But guess what? You're in his business. I know it. Aren't we in his business? He wants us to understand that. James 1, 7, 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. Every good thing comes from God. Amen. Nobody else can take credit for that except God. Isn't that right? Right. Praise God. I, I'm just thankful. I'm just saying, I'm starting with just a few scriptures. I want to start with one more. Numbers 23, 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do it? Or has he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Some people believe that God, I want to say this, is like a genie. In a bottle. Help us. All you need is three wishes. And you better make them right. <laughs> when it's done, it's over. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Uh, and so, you better pick wisely. And after your wishes are gone, you're powerless and it's over. That's not God at all. I mean, actually, some people even treat it like a vending machine. I don't know if you ever thought about this. But you go up to it. You got a favorite thing in there. You push the money, push the button. And that thing rolls, and sometimes you have to kind of bump it a little bit to get it on out, and you keep doing that. But also, when it's empty, it's gone. It's over. He doesn't run out of power. Yes. He doesn't run out of anything like that. He is ongoing, and uh, they have some issues with that. But and, and, they, and some people treat God like he's weak, or any God, or uh, not able to do very much at all. But I, I want to talk to you today because his arm is not short. Come on now. Amen. And, and, and his ear is not deaf. He's not slack concerning his promise. His promises are true and sure. He is love as far as reaching. His power has not dried up. He, his word is still true. Amen. And when you need him, he'll be there. Yes. And we just have to, we got to remind ourselves, he's always speaking. But are we tuned in to hear him? He's always uh, looking to and fro to see who he can bless. Isn't that right? Yes. And the thing is, is that he is a God. Well, you know what? He is God all by himself. Yes, I know. He said in his word that I am God and I change not. Right? Now, if he did it for someone else, he can do it for you. Amen. Is that true? Yes. If he did it before, he can do it again. Yep. The Bible yes. proves this idea that that he can do it again and again. And in many different times and ways, you know, you remember when, when I believe it was Elijah, it was Elijah, and he came upon a, a woman and she's gathering sticks to make <laughs> a meal and die. Yes. Right? Her and her son, correct? Yep. Well, you remember, y'all remember what happens? He shows up and this goes on and, and, and as they show up, um, he looks at her and says, hey, uh, you want something to drink? That's no problem. And do you have something to eat? And she goes, no, oh, I'm sorry. We were actually gathering for sticks, and we're just going to get this together, and we're going to make this last meal and die. I mean, how much more? Not we're going to make this meal and then hope that somebody else brings food. She said, I'm going to eat it. You can't get any more down than this. Yeah. I'm going to make this last meal, and I'm going to die. Yeah. You know why? The provision, or she didn't have it. The husband, she didn't have anybody. And it was over, and there was a drought, and there was all kinds of stuff going on. 
and uh, the, the Elijah, the Elijah thing are both similar, uh, and we'll get to that. But anyway, what I found interesting is how he challenges one for over the other. He looks at Elijah, looks at her, and says, "Okay, make me a little cake. Make me a cake, a little cake first, and then you're then one of you and your son." You know, if it's my last meal and I'm going to die, if somebody wants what I've got and this is my last meal, I have some different words for you then. I'll bless you. <laughs> How many know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And so the thing is, she basically jumped in and did exactly what she was supposed to. And, and I actually got this down here that says, for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day of the Lord sent his rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of, uh, of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. Now, before I... I can go over so many different directions. I'm going to say, show you something. There's many things that had to happen for this to happen. What if the man of God didn't go? We always look at the faith of the woman. But what if the man of God didn't go? What if the men and women of God didn't go? That's right. Right. Right here. The Lord tells us sometimes to do something because you could be the one carrying the miracle. That's right. Amen. But we think, oh, no, you know, get somebody else. Oh, God can get somebody else. But he's trying to get... Get blessing through you to somebody else. Amen. And a lot of times, you can be surprised what an encouraging word does for somebody. Yes. Amen. Right? Yes. Just build them up. Just love them. Just, just do some wonderful things. There's something that happens when that begins to uh, do that. But and it's, that's wonderful with that. But here's what's interesting to me. He relayed the word. Now it's up to her to receive it. I think Daniel and you were talking about this years and years and years ago. That that there, you know, you remember there's many widows that died. Okay, during that time. Why this one? You say, well that's kind of still why did God send them. No, 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 no. God knew who would answer and receive. Yeah. Yep. Amen. Uh, Help us. Yes. Is that right? Yes. That's good. And God ain't selfish. He knows if you're going to say yes or no. Yeah, that's right. Yes. And the thing is, is sometimes there are some sent to you to be the registration of no's or yeses. But watch. He, you know, I'm going to say no here because I know this person will receive. Now, unlike, here's what's interesting with this one. In 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7, there's two sons in Elijah. And the husband's dead. If you remember, the creditors are coming for the son because the bills have to be paid. But there wasn't a big do this for me, do that for me, or whatever. Elisha didn't do her like Elijah like did the other widow. Here's exactly what he did. He walked in and said, hey, what shall I do for you? What do you have in your house? Because remember, she said, I ain't got nothing. She always has something. Got something. <laughs> and she had a little small jar of oil. Some say a bottle, some it's different translations, but even one translation even called it all the oil. But here's the deal. There was oil, and God, and the man of God used what she had. And what I like, it says, go to all, everybody say all. All. All, all your neighbors. All. Come on, all. 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 All in two or three. Go to all your neighbors. And even says in the Bible, if you look in there, in uh, 2 Kings 4, 1 through 7, it says, and not just a few. <laughs> Amen? Go to all Amen. and not just a few. Yeah. See, this is exactly what I'm talking about. We believe we're too small or just enough to get by. He said, borrow from all your neighbors and don't ask 
for just a few. You can't get more plain than that. You've got to... You know what? The miracle... Okay, and they got blessed. They paid their debt off. And I know you've heard this before, but here's the thing. She should have sent them kids as far as long as she could to borrow everything she could. I remember preaching this sermon 15 years ago, and I called it a bathtub, a bathtub blessing. In other words, I would have been borrowing people's bathtubs. You now, oil was important and expensive back then, for, and you could make a lot of money selling it. But isn't it interesting that the oil only stopped when her belief stopped? Yes. I'll say it again. The oil stopped when her belief stopped. What do we mean by that? When they ran out of vessels. Right. It says the oil continued to pour and come out until there was no more vessels. Because she was trying to bring another vessel. There is no more. Whoop, oil stopped. I said there will still be born. And she'd probably still be alive. <laughs> you know, all these years later. You know, and, and the thing is, there's things that happen all throughout our life. And it, it, it's really amazing. Um. I'm kind of showing my age with what I'm about to say because some people might not, not, not even know this person I'm about to say. Man, has anybody in this room ever heard of a boxer named Ernie Shavers? Okay, Ernie Shavers was considered, if you Google him, the hardest puncher of all time. And how many remember the Arsenio Hall show? Yeah. Okay, on the Arsenio Hall show, Arsenio Hall had Mike Tyson. Muhammad Ali and uh, what other boys? Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard. Sugar Ray Leonard on there, and they're having a good time. You know, still like Arsenio Hall is, and they were all talking about who's the best, who's this and that. And uh, Mike Tyson and Sugar Ray Leonard were pointing to Muhammad Ali, he was the best. And he was already talking slow, and he was already had those problems. You know, Muhammad Ali, and he lost his speech yeah. eventually. And. Uh, Arsena Hall looked at him and said, who is the hardest puncher that you've ever encountered? He goes, a man by the name of Ernie Shaver. And he's kind of looked at him and says, why do you think I talk so slow? That's how hard he is. <laughs> <laughs> now, the interesting thing, you Google it, he is, the man has 68 knockouts, ball, like, or something like this. It's, it's incredible. And he's lost, he lost uh, about 14 fights, but the man would hit so hard uh, Ernie Shavers. He said, why are you talking about him? When I was dating my wife the first time, not the first time, I didn't know. When I was dating my wife back in the early 80s, 84, uh, Ernie Shavers came and preached at our church in Colorado Springs. And uh, I was, you know, really good shape, military, all that kind of stuff. And I, I just started talking to him, Ernie Shavers, that mess with the church was huge. But he, you know, we didn't have the internet or nothing, but I knew who Ernie Shavers was, and I just talked to him and all this kind of stuff. And he was strong, big, strong guy. And, and I just kept messing with him, and he said, man, you crazy. He thought I was crazy. And I was, in fact, in my early 20s. I talked, I got off my rocker with this guy. And I'd say things, and, and he'd laugh and joke, and, and uh, uh, Pastor Jones knew I would entertain him and do all this stuff. And, we were sitting there just talking and all that. And so anyway, that's either here or there. We were talking about some different things. And he told me, in the first time I saw him, that he witnessed to Muhammad Ali. And he said, he told him about Jesus. And Muhammad Ali told him, he said, now Ernie, if your Jesus would heal me of this, then I believe. It don't work that way. You see, you see how he... Yeah. If this, if, 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 in other words, you know, you only believe that God's going to move. But guess what? He would heal. He healed sinners. Yes, he yeah. Right? But there was no belief in uh, Muhammad Ali's statement. Okay, now, we're going to tell you the story. Is, okay, two years later, right before we moved to what, Texas, I didn't know I had Graves' disease. I lost a lot of weight. I looked horrible. And Ernie Shavers came back. And he looked at me and went, Here? He remembered me because I was a you know, freak. He goes, hey, what's wrong with you? He said, you look terrible. I said, hey, thanks. And goes, but we're talking. He goes, and he looked me straight. He said, do you have AIDS? He wouldn't kick me. I went, no. I hope not. 
I know I had grades. And uh, <clears throat> so we're talking. And he still had that excitement about the Lord, and he wanted to talk about God and get people saved. And, and, he, and he, he started telling me, but here's my point. I'm sitting around a, a, a professional boxer, and I just kind of took it like he's just there and all that, not realizing sometimes you're in the company of somebody that's important, right? Uh, and um, so anyway... That's a whole other, another story. Of course, God healed me in grace, and I got healed, and it was later, and different things happened. That's good, but that's not where I was going with the story. Um, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say this. God's telling Daniel this. There was a man that came to our church in Waco, Texas, and I had no idea who he was. I wasn't even reading the Bible. This was back in those days in the 90s. And uh, I just didn't read the word. I didn't know. I was sitting in the presence of a powerful man of God. And he came to our church as a guest speaker. And he spoke. And I thought, man, this guy's got the Bible memorized. Smart word and backward. He, he pulled out these cards out of his pocket. He was talking about how he knew the whole thing. He keeps it in his pocket to get memorized. But, but guess what? It wasn't just memorization. He had a relationship. And he talked about prayer, and he, was, he got me really excited, and it lasted a week, and then I forgot all about it, okay? I'm just being real blunt with you, honest. So, anyway, I thought, wow, that guy's cool, you know? And I, I just, I'll, I'll say his name, but some of you know, may know him, some of you may not, but his name is Charles Caps. And Charles Caps, uh, I'll fast forward 10 years later, and when I got in faith and I got pumped up and got excited, and I, I like guys like Criffo Dollar and I like guys like Kenneth Cope and stuff, well, Charles Katz was their guy. That's how important Charles Katz was. Charles Katz ignited the fire in Criffo Dollar. Charles Katz ignited the fire in mean, mean, Kenneth Cope. Uh, matter of fact, Charles Katz passed away in 2022. And uh, But this guy was so on fire. But anyway, I'm sitting here in the presence of a man. Like it could, could, if I would have just saw him back then, I would have caught the word earlier. How I many know where I'm going with this? Yeah. But sometimes you're around people. I think with Dana, when he was a teenager, I mean, Catherine Kuhlman came. Uh, you were a teenager, right? Yeah, he came to that same church that we went to. I mean, I, I wasn't there. Dana's way older than I am, so I wasn't there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but the thing is, but see, there was no internet or nothing, but it's just another person to some people. Sometimes we need to glean from people. Yeah, that's right. Catch from people. Amen? Yeah. And so, so back to this. It says, so she left him and shut the door behind her sons and were bringing her containers. She poured oil. Oh, no, I said this moment. I want to read it. When the containers were full, she said to her son, bring me another container. And he said, there is not a one left. Then the oil stopped multiplying. Mm. Okay? Everybody say multiplying. Multiplying. And then she came and told the man of God, he said, go sell the oil, pay the debt, and live with your children, and everything's going to be great. See, God did it once for the widow of Zarephath, and, and God did it again for the widow of Bethel, but to the two yeah. different men of God. Yes. Amen. Okay? Two different ways. I promise you that God is sending people to you trying to get something to you, but are you willing to receive it? We've got to be able to receive it. And the enemy wants to destroy us. He wants you miserable. He wants you destroyed. And guess what? We are not bound by physical nature. We have a supernatural God. We have got to start looking at supernatural places. You know, we can't say, well, you know, this is going to happen. Going to, oh. No, no, no. Start believing God to do something. Amen? Mm -hmm. We've got to start trusting Him. Yes. You know, uh, you know, we know that Moses parted the water, but he had to take a step of faith, and he stepped a rod out. You realize that, what I mean by just doing that? How about, okay, Elijah, when he walked over and the water parted, 
He did it. Elijah saw it. It worked. I love how Elijah, when he got a hold of the mantle, he went over, where's the God of Elijah? <laughs> right? And so, see, that's a whole different story than the son of Stephen. Then the, the one that the demons grabbed and beat him up to send him outside naked. <laughs> because remember, they were trying to cast out demons just like Paul and the others. The demons look at him and says, Paul I know, Jesus I know, but who are you? Mm -hmm. Right? The thing is, you need to have a personal relationship with God that's right. to see breakthrough. Amen. And so that's why it didn't work for them. The reason it worked for Elijah, Elijah, with Elijah's mantle, is because he knew the miracles work, but he said he wanted a devil portion of everything. He said, Where's God of Elijah? <laughs> Boom. He said that water part open because God knew he took a step out and did it. He didn't run from it. Amen. Amen? Amen. And actually Elijah ended up doing more miracles than Elijah. Hmm. That's kind of that's kind of interesting, and so what what I where I wanted to go with this today is that I know today that some are facing a Red Sea situation. You look forward, you look back, you look to the left, you look to the right. You don't know which direction to go. You. you you're trying to figure out there's no way out, but God is still able to part the waters of the mighty Red Sea in your life. Amen. Amen. God is still able to make a way when there is no way. That's right. God is still able to bring light of you know to darkness. Amen. Amen. Genesis 5 24 is real interesting. And Enoch walked with God, and he Amen. was not, for God took him. Well, where'd he go? God know this. Where'd he go? How do you go? How do you? And I like the little girl back there went. She's pointing up. You see that? How old is that little girl? Seven. Seven years old. She knew. Boy, oh, God. Amen? Amen. Okay, so he went with God, and God took him. So the thing was, this guy had such a relationship with God that God just took him. The only, only other report. I mean, like that, of course, Elijah and the chariots. But, 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 but here's what's cool about that. You know, well, I don't want to talk about that. I want to stay with where I'm going right now. God will do it again for the church. Amen. God will do it for you right now. Amen. 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 Do you know that one day, and I know it's going to get talked about a whole lot, but 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17... For the Lord himself should descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we which are alive remaining shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we be forever. Amen? Amen. Now, I, I know, and I'm excited that there's a rapture. I'm excited that, that, that there's a time where he comes for his people. But what about now? Right. What are we doing now? Right. Why are we letting the enemy run over us? Amen. Amen. You go in this, this church over here, and there's drama everywhere. You go in that church over there, and, and don't tell him what he's doing with her. You go in that. Now watch. Every church got issues. I, I'm not pointing like that because as long as you got people, you're gonna have some issues. That's Amen. Right. I don't care. There's not a perfect church. I actually remember this. A mighty man got look at me, and he said. He said, oh, he says, I don't know about that pastor over there. And I said, well, what's wrong? He says, oh, so-and-so, and they got this going on and sexual this and that, and that's they're going through all this thing. And I went, dude, your song, your song director sleeping with somebody in the choir. I knew this <laughs> about his, and he's pointing over here. Yeah. Stop. Right. Stop pointing at everybody. Amen. Let's get ourselves fixed. Amen? Amen. If we get ourselves fixed, it'll be all right. Amen. We worry about, I need to worry about Gary. That's right. Amen? Now, I'm going to pull everybody else up, but let's not, don't let people rob you. 
Amen. what God can do for you. Right. And you know what? Well, you just go in there, you go in that place, you can cause a lighthouse to come to that place. That's right. Amen. Because, and last time I checked, the anointing is here. Yes. Amen. And the anointing is caught, not taught. Amen. Right? And so, you know that in Acts 10, 44 through 46, it says, While Peter spake, yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word, and they of the circumcision, which believed, were uh, astonished, and many as came with Peter, because of the Gentiles, also poured out the Holy Ghost gift of the Holy Ghost, for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Amen. Now, if you think about that, you put this with Acts 19, 6, and when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied and poured out the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost to the 120. And then he poured out the Holy Spirit again to the house of Cornelius. We need the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We need the Holy Ghost. Yes. We need Him in our decision making. Yes. Amen. And the thing is, is that a lot of us think, oh, you know, I can do it without Him. No, we can't. Mm -mm. And so, if God poured out the Holy Spirit once for someone, He wants you to do it again today for you. Amen. And He's able. God has proven Himself time after time. I mean, did Jesus, okay, when Jesus walked around, did he heal sickness? Yes. yes. Right? He did. I mean, he, he, did he help people? Did he, did he, did he cause some, uh, Peter to go down and pick up a fish and pull a gold, uh, gold coin out of his mouth? Yes. Oh, come on, man. I think we need to understand that there was peculiar things that happened because God doesn't want you to think it has to be a certain way. He wants to bless us, but are you willing to take the blessing the way He wants to give it to you? Amen. Why would we say, I want it to happen this way and that way? Well, you just confined His hands. Right? See, God proves it over and over and over. In sickness, He's healed. In financial problems, He has uh, been a provider. In trouble, He's been a savior. In a crisis situation, He's been a way maker. In the storms of life, he has been a shelter in the loneliness. He has been a friend. God is here now, but we've got to believe because uh, guess what? If the enemy can get you to stop believing, you're going to right. stop receiving. Right. Right. right? right. He does not want us to believe. It doesn't matter who I've crossed and had encounters with, like some of these stories I've said. What matters is the account of Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. And there's not a special way. I mean, you can get saved in a bathroom. That's right. Outside, uh, in the shower. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, Jesus is real. Amen. Amen. How bad do you want what he has for you? I, the enemy's backed me up many times, but I always come back. Amen. And don't feel like you're the only one. Right. Don't feel like, well, you don't know what I'm going through. You know what? That's all right. I don't know what people need in this place. I mean, financial, physical, so, you know, whatever you're needing. But I wasn't going to say this, and I'm going to say it anyway. I think people set standards that's none of your business to set a standard for somebody else. Right. Right. I'm going to say a holy name, as you call it, over, or even online, but I'm going to say it because I need to say this. And you can check me on this on Google. But John Wesley, have you ever, ever heard of John Wesley? He started the Methodist Church, him and his right. brother. John Wesley, there's a great story. That's the guy, if you remember when Billy Graham was a little kid, oh, yeah. or not a little kid, when he was young, and he got to go over there and he had their little knee prints and he put his knee prints and he said, God, do it again, but do it through me. Billy Graham's story, okay? That was in John Wesley's house. Well, John Wesley has a great track record of what he done, but watch. John Wesley said something that bothered me really bad. He, he 
quoted this, and you can Google this. He said, I don't have much use for a man who don't pray four hours. I thought, well, you don't like me then. <laughs> now, here's why I'm saying that. And I have to say this. I don't think it's in the number of hours. You say, well, that's what people say, don't pray. Hear me out. It's your intimacy with the Father that causes yeah. breakthrough. You spend in time saying, okay, well, I've got to do it from four to eight. Well, I haven't found anywhere here where it says you got to pray from four to eight. That's right. That's right. You Continually. Know what? Well, you know what? He said, he's, okay, he, actually, if you look at the, Jesus said, here's how you pray. And he gives us a prayer. I think that thing lasts like a minute. Right. <laughs> Yeah. Right? He said, pray like this. And he gives us a way of praying. That's good. So, but watch. We can pray without see Praying without ceasing is not going into a closet shutting down for four hours. And don't get me wrong. The more intimacy you have with the Father, I, I get it now. I'm actually spending time with the Father. Like I should. But you can pray while you're driving in the street. Right. You can pray when you're working, or uh, you can pray on your breath. You can you can you can do this while you're in the shower. You can pray without ceasing, uh, because people will take a little. Well, I need to stay up all night, never go to sleep again, or I'm not praying without ceasing. Are you silly? People try to make it robotic, and they take the whole yeah. presence of God thing out. Yes. It's about him, amen? amen. And the reason I brought up the name is because he was proud to say it out loud. And I'm sure there was a reason he said it that way. Because I'm sure he probably was around a lot of people. You know, I can't even say it I can't speculate why he said that. But y'all been around people and you know how people can rub you. Right. right? Matter of fact, it even goes on to say as he got older... He got to a point where he prayed eight hours a day. Wow. And, but see, then you got someone like Charles Capps, the guy I'm talking about earlier. He had a love relationship with the Lord, and he, had, and he gave God time for prayer. But the way he presented it made me want to pursue it. You see the difference? Yes. yes. Not like it's unachievable. There's people that say, you've got to pray. Uh, this many hours, you need to read 25 chapters a day, and you got to go do this and go pray for you to do this. No, no. I want to do what Jesus tells me to do. That's right. Amen. I want to be led by Christ, but we got to be willing to listen. Amen. Because you'll see breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. And you'll see things begin to change and lives begin to get well. You know, for like this lady right here in the front, for her to be in a hospital bed and it's over, to up and walk in two weeks. And for her to be moving around, I mean, she was in a wheelchair. Yes. Amen? Yeah. yeah, you feel so bad. I mean, she was, it was tearing her up. But guess what? God had planned. Yes. That's right. Amen. 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 Only believe. That's right. <laughs> Only believe, praise God. Amen. My breathing is here. No, they're fine. Amen. I stand up. I'm excited that about our praise and worship this morning. Yes. I'm excited that it felt more free. Not him then. Right? And I think it's going to get better and more better. Yes. Amen. I'm excited Amen. about the word that Elizabeth's going to bring this Wednesday. Yes. yes. Amen. Amen. But you know what? Hallelujah. I'm going to pray right now because there's people who something right now. Amen. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now for every individual in this place. I thank you that you are God of the breakthrough. I'll say it again. I thank you that you are God of breakthrough. I pray, Lord, that you empower us more and more. I look forward to every testimony that comes from our mouth. Thank you. From their mouth. I thank you, Lord, that 
that you begin to increase this moment. In places that seems that it cannot happen, that you begin to operate there. Yes. I thank you for breakthrough after breakthrough after breakthrough. I thank you for the Holy Spirit that begins to flood people's lives. But Lord, I thank you right now, that right now, as, as even as I'm praying, that there are people, even if a person in this place, that their body may have an issue going on, that you begin to touch that part of the body. That you begin to touch their finances. That you begin to alter and move in people. There's even right now, there's people out there that feel led to do something for someone. Lord, that you awaken that and cause them to go through with it. Yes. Just like Elijah and Elijah. Are, are the men and women of God willing to go forward and do what they're supposed to do so people can receive? Yes. And Father, I thank you as you touch the people here. Yes. I pray for marriages in this place. Yes. I pray for marriages. Yes. That you enrich marriages more and more. Yes. I thank you for relationships, God. Yes. I thank you, Lord. As you begin to pour out more and more. And even give us unctions, God, to witness to people about you, Christ. That people are led to Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, for the baptism tank that we're going to set up. For every person that's got to say, we're going to dunk them in Jesus' name. And I thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost. And I praise you, Lord, for your goodness. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness. And if a seven-year-old child can answer the question, like, and Woo. pull it up, uh -uh, amen, yeah. how much more should we go? Yeah. He's good, amen. He's good. He's good. He's good. I plead the blood of Jesus in place. And I praise you and I thank you, God. And, Lord, even as we go from this place, the anointing goes with us. Yes. And it's tangible. And, there, and some people are going to actually come up to you and approach you and say, and say, there's something about you. I, I just feel like I'm supposed to go up to you. And you begin to tell them about Christ and their life has changed. I thank you, Lord, for your goodness, Lord. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for an outpouring. I thank you for an outpouring. I thank you for an outpouring. I thank you for loving us. I thank you for being with us. And I thank you for who you are. In the mighty name of Jesus. And all God's people say it. Amen. Amen.